Okay, so uh, welcome to this last lecture on this course on control engineering and to and to continue on what we had learned in state space techniques. So, we started off by writing down state space equations, uh, then we analyzed stability by looking at linearization of a nonlinear system, uh, then we looked at stability in terms of the eigenvalues of the matrix A. So, we will go a little further and see what else can we do with the state space analysis. So, we will keep the, the analysis to a very minimal, right? so I will not do proofs of what I am going to talk about, I just give you a very general idea for a very uh, maybe just uh, small 2 by 2 systems. Okay, so, the first thing which we will learn is the notion of controllability. So, we start with a general state space system x dot is a x plus b u and y is c x plus d u, where as usual x is a n dimensional state vector, a is the system matrix which is of dimension n, n cross n, uh, u is a control input could be an m dimensional input, it could also just be a one dimensional input or just a scalar input, c is a p cross n matrix given that y is a set of n m outputs, I just, miss, I just write it down here. So, y is uh, the uh, output vector and could be an m, m uh, sorry a p vector and the input is uh, m vector. Okay. So, what else can we do now? So, just given a system x dot equal to a x, I know how to find out stability. I also know how to go from the state space representation to the transfer function. This we had learned in the earlier lecture. So, I will just write down uh, the formula for you again g of s is c s i minus a inverse b plus d. Okay. Okay, so, this, this has all been good so far. Now, a very important notion. So, so far when we were doing the entire transfer function based analysis of designing compensators in via root locus, via the frequency domain, Bode plots, steady state errors and so on, we never asked ourselves is the system controllable, right. We just say okay, so given this system uh, of given a certain transfer function, as long as it is stable or stabilizable, as, as long as I could pull uh, the root locus to the left half plane and, and, and things like that. I even knew in the Nyquist plot that I could start with a open loop unstable system, end up with a closed loop stable system. I never asked is it controllable before I even start controlling. Now, even before I answer is it controllable or not, first we need to formalize the notion of controllability. Okay? So, but the definition says that a system is controllable at some time t0 if it is possible by means of any unconstrained control vector u to transfer the system from any initial state to any other state in a finite interval of time. Okay, let us say um, just if I just were to draw it graphically, let us say I have a two dimensional state space x1 and x2 both T. Now, I say given any initial state here, okay, can I transfer to any other state? It should be in the entire R2, entire of this two dimensional space. Can I go for example, from here till here by application of some control say u1 in some finite time t1 and that is true for all points from here till here, here, here and so on. Right? So, is it possible? by means of any unconstrained control, I do not say, I do not have a limit on the amount of control effort I, I put it, I say well, can I at least control, maybe the effort is really large, unconstrained control vector to transfer from any initial state to any other final state in a finite interval of time. Now, this finite interval of time is, is important. Now, there could be systems which are just partially controllable. Again, I will not go to the details of this, but I will just tell you. So, if I have say systems with say some n states, so which means x is a vector x1 till xn and I say that the first n over 2 states are controllable and the remaining n over 2 states are uncontrollable. Okay? So, these are controllable states, these are 
uncontrollable states. Now, what can I do with these systems is I just ask a question is are these systems stabilizable? It is a little weaker notion of controllability. So, I can do anything good with the system as long as the uncontrollable modes are stable. That if these are stable, then I can do something with these control modes here. So, for partially controllable systems, partially controllable here means I can control only half the states. If the uncontrollable modes are stable, these are the uncontrollable modes and the other modes are controllable, then the system is stabilizable. Okay. So, what could be a, a very uh, vague example of this? So, let us say I am in a, in a small classroom and I want to control the classroom. Control essentially would mean here I just want to not make, no, 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 not the stud students should not have any crosstalk, they should not make any, any noise for example like a, in, in a high school. So, if nobody is there, there is no control input, there is no teacher in the class, there is no control input. So, the entire class is in a mess, everybody is shouting, talking, throwing paper balls and stuff like that. Now, say I enter the classroom, say the classroom has 10 people and it is more or less possible that I control, I could control the 10 guys, I could just maybe warn them. Uh, by whatever means I could control them, I could threaten them, I could say I will give you 2 marks less or I will give you a chocolate or things like that and I could control. Now say if the size of the classroom is say 20, I could possibly still manage. If it is say 100, then there could be 2 people who could control the classroom. right? If there are say 500 and it is very likely that only two people may not be able to control the classroom. So, I can split those class, that classroom into uh, well uh, mischievous guys and good guys and I assume that the mischievous guys that, that the entire you know all these guys are good guys and they are controllable. So, if I say they say the uh, amount of mischievous guys is 100 and the good guys are say 400 that they are just quiet by themselves. Now, I ask my question is and I, I actually do not have control over the 400, say the first 100 are sitting in the first couple of rows and then the 400 guys are really far that I even if I shout or yell at them, they will not be able to listen, but they are all quiet guys, they will naturally be quiet. right? So, here it says that the system is partially controllable, I only have access to the first 100 guys. So, this entire classroom is stabilizable I would say or it is or it can be made quiet only if the other 400 guys whom I do not have any control of are quiet by themselves. I could control the first 100 guys. right? So, this is a very, you know, I am just thinking of an example and the best uh, well, non-engineering example I could come up was this one. So, these are partially controllable systems where I say I could do something, I can make the class quieter only if the guys whom I do not have access to are quiet by themselves. Okay. Now, how to test controllability? So, what am I given? I am given this equation x dot is a x plus b u and I say can I start from x and initial condition x naught if I may call it. So, I will just let me denote this as x naught and I will go to some say state x at t 1, some finite time t and with some unconstrained control. So, can I do something with this differential equation? So, the solution to this differential equation would look uh, like this. So, I have a e power a t, okay. let us not really worry about how the exponential of a matrix looks like, uh, that is a very detailed topic by itself, but just assume that if I Okay, this is a very, uh, very uh, crude and not a very uh, smart way of looking at it. But if I have say a scalar differential equation x dot equal to small a and x, where x is just a one dimensional vector, it is in R. Then I say that the solution is x of t is e power a t x naught. Okay. Now, similarly, if a this is a vector x is in R n as in our case, a is uh, uh, n cross n matrix, then this exponential would be replaced by e power a t. On the left hand side, I will have a vector of dimension n and my initial condition will also be a vector of dimension n. Right? Okay, so, I should not really write this a multiplied by t, uh, just write it a 
so not a of t but I should write it simply a multiplied by t okay. So how to compute this is not, not really important but this is also called the state transition matrix. So it means that given a certain x0 how will my system, the system is defined by a, will take this initial condition over time to some other xt. Okay, just the evolution of an initial condition. So if I have the input, I will have something like this. So what is unknown in this? Okay, so if I just you know, a little write down this, say I have, let me for, for example, for simply assume that uh, x of 0 is some number and say x of t, I want to go to the origin right, from any initial condition. So this would uh, look like minus x, sorry. So on the left hand side I will have 0, I get these guys here. So this would be uh, x0 e power minus a t would be integral of all this entire thing e power a t minus tau b u tau d tau. So essentially here I am the, the answer or, or the problem here is to okay what all what are known to me the initial condition is known to me the final condition is the origin a is known to me b is known to me and this is looks, looks like an equation right so given a b the initial condition can i say that i can go from an initial condition any non zero to a zero final condition so the only unknown is this one u of t right so does there exist a solution u of u of t such that this equation is solvable. So that is the entire controllability problem. Again, I will not go into the details of computing how the solution goes, but I will just directly introduce to you to the way of checking this one. Okay? So the system is completely controllable if and only if the rank of this matrix n cross n times n cross m that is this will be uh, is if you look at here b is an n cross m matrix and I keep on doing this that this matrix should be of rank n right? and I say that the system is then completely controllable this one okay. So let us okay, let us do uh, something something else now right so to really understand these concepts in a in a different way. Okay, I'll use this uh, after a very long time. Okay, so let let me start with a with a simple looking example. Uh, let me say I have okay, I have a circuit which looks like this. I have a R. This R one, C one. R2, C2, an input, I call it V, say some U, say it is a current source. Okay. So this is this is how, how it looks like. Okay. So first is what are the states? Well, the states, if I could call the voltages across these as states, so I will call this as the voltage across the capacitor C1 as V1 and sorry uh, as v1 and then the voltage across the capacitor c2 as v2 so i can write down equations okay what is the first is so this is a current source the total currents add up i can say that r1 c1 d v1 by dt is minus of v1 plus u okay similarly for dv2 by dt so that is uh, or say dv2 by dt is okay, I just get this uh, in the denominator uh, minus 1 over r2 c2 v2 plus u over r2 c2 okay so i just write down these equations now say in the state space form v1 dot v2 dot is minus 1 over R1 C1 0 0 minus 1 over R2 C2 with V1 V2 B2 
plus what I now have is 1 over R1 C1, 1 over R2 C2 times u. Okay. So, uh, what does control mean in this case? Okay. So, if I uh, look at this in terms of solving my differential equation, for example, uh, given an input current here, can I from starting from in any initial condition, can I get say C1 to be at 5 volts and C2 to be at say 7.5 volts? or either way, so it could be a 6 here, it could be a 9 here and so on, all, all possible combinations. Can I stabilize them to some arbitrary voltages? Okay. So, how will my solution look like? Solution, if I say, okay. Okay. so let me just call this uh, in the standard notation, this is x dot of t. Okay. So, x of t here would be uh, e power minus 1 over r 1 c 1 x 1 of 0, x 1 is v 1, right. So, I am just calling this v is to be x and e power minus 1 over r 2 c 2 x 2 of 0 okay, plus 0 to t again all the all the other term sets which uh, will have the b u t minus tau d tau. So, this will be e power minus t minus tau over r 1 c 1 and this entire guy divided by r 1 c 1 and it is e power minus t minus tau over r 2 c 2 with the entire guy divided by r 2 c 2 and I have u tau d tau. Okay. Now, uh, let me take a, a special case where the uh, time constants are the same, where 1 over R1 C1 is 1 over R2 C2. Okay. Okay. So, what happens in that case is my x of t would be okay, e power minus t, you can have the two initial states right, x1 naught x 2 naught plus integral. So, if I go back to the to the previous one, here right. So, this all these are the same r 1 c 1 equal to r 2 c 2 and let me even call this as 1 right for simplicity and therefore, say all, all these will be 1. So, x 1 if this is, so this vector essentially is x 1 and x 2. So, x 1 is e power minus r min e power minus uh, uh, what is it? E. So, so from, from the first uh, okay, what, what the hell is happening? Okay, sorry, I just uh, missed a t here, right? So, this one, this and this is so this is like the e power a t x naught. Sorry, I just uh, missed the t here. So, if I write down these two equations uh, separately or I just maybe club them into one. So, how will how will the overall solution look like? So, this is integral. So, all, everything all the parameters are set to 1, 0 to t e power minus t minus tau u tau all this multiplied by 1 and a 1 and a d tau because they are the same right. So, here so, this e power minus t minus tau, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. So, both are the same numbers essentially, both are the same numbers multiplied by u t u, u tau d tau. Okay. So, okay, look at this and I will ask starting from, so this is our question, right? starting from x 1 0, x 2 0, what are the states? 
final states I can reach. Final okay, states which one can reach. Okay, or starting from here, what all points I can control my system to. Okay, so uh, look at this thing, right? So this entire thing here for a particular input would be just a just a constant, right? So my x of t, and let me also assume for simplicity that x1 of 0 is x2 of 0 is the origin, does not really matter, right? So in, in a linear system, I am here, I am here. If I can go from here to here, it also would mean I can come back here. As a simple proof, but just let us assume that we know this or we, we will try to believe this. Okay? So, my solution all possible places where I can go starting from this, this is my initial condition x1 naught, x2 naught. So, x of t is some function, let me call this some alpha t, alpha t 1 1. Okay, if I just write down the vector thing, this would be x1 of t, x2 of t is so both are at the same values alpha t, alpha t. And I started my problem by posing the question can I get capacitor 1 to, to 5 volts, capacitor 2 to 7.5 volts? Well, the answer in this case is that I cannot. If this is if C1 if, if v1 goes to 5, v2 should also go to 5. Now, this is happening in this special case only when r1 c1 and r2 c2 one uh, both have the same values. For all others other values, I can see that the system is controllable. So, I could just compute the B matrix A B and check for its rank. Okay? This, this will be some, some matrix. Uh, okay. B is 1 over R1 C1, uh, 1 over R2 C2, A times B, what is this? A is 1 over R1 C1, 0, 0, minus 1 over R2 C2 and I multiply this with B, what is B? This is R1 C1, R2 C2. So, this essentially is, uh, so I will have minus 1 over R1 C1 square and here I will have 1 over with a minus sign R2 C2 square. Right? So, the rank of this should be should be 2 which means I look at the determinant and it says okay, minus 1 over R1 uh, C1 1 over R2 C2 square this plus 1 over R1 C1 square R2 C2, this should not be 0 and then it is full rank. And you see in the special case when everything becomes 1, it goes to 0. So, it loses controllability. So, for all other values apart from this one, I can get to a configuration like this. Right? I can go, this can go, V1 can go at 5, V2 to 7.5 and so on. But for some, some particular value of R1, C1, R2, C2, the system is not controllable. Okay. Let us also see what happens when the system is not controllable. What does it mean in terms of transfer functions? Okay. Let me uh, instead consider a circuit which looks like this. U L have a R so this is R, this is R. I measure the output as the voltage here plus minus Y, uh, this is plus minus V C, the current here is I L, and it is quite natural to choose I L and V C as the states of the system. Okay. So, let us first write down the uh, state equations for this. Okay. So, I will, uh, well, uh, how do you start with? So, you have 
So, let me call this as uh, x 1, I will call this as x 2, I write down the equations L x 1 dot plus R x 1, this is x 1 is I L from here. So, this will be x 2 plus R c x 2 dot, okay. so from, from here with the plus here and similarly x 2 dot is u minus x 1 and the final equation y is u minus x 1 times r which results in the state space equation which looks like this x 1 dot x 2 dot is minus 2 2 times uh, r over l I have 1 over l minus 1 over c 0 I have x 1 x 2 plus r over l 1 over c times u and the output y in terms of c x plus d u is minus r 0 x 1 x 2 plus r times u. Okay. Now, first is is this system controllable? Well, the idea would be to check the rank of B A B. So, this is usually also referred to as the controllability matrix. So, this C turns out to be in our case as R over L 1 over C. Okay, so, this is the, the B and then this is 2 R square over L square plus 1 over L C and minus R over L C. And then you see that the determinant of this C is R square by L square C minus 1 over L C square or the system is controllable as long as R square is not equal to L C. Okay. So, for all other values the system is controllable. Okay. What does this now mean in terms of transfer functions? So, we know that from the uh, transfer function uh, the relation between the state space and transfer function. So, given x dot is a x plus b u and y equal to c x plus d u, the transfer function g of s is simply c s i minus a inverse b plus d. Okay. Now, let us choose a value or just choose values of uh, this uh, the circuit parameters such that the system is not controllable. So, what it is said here is that R square should not be equal to L C, okay. should not be equal to L C. So, let us be notorious and say well what happens if R equal to L C and say everything is equal to 1, you know say 1 is R, 1 is L, 1 is C. So, the system violates the controllability condition. In that case, my system matrix A becomes minus 2, 1 minus 1 0, B is 1 1, C is minus 1 0 and D is 1. Okay. Now, if I just do the, the formula, just substitute this here. So, what I get is C, so this entire term C S I mi, minus A inverse B plus D is minus S minus 1 over s square plus 2s plus 1 plus 1. Okay. So, this is also minus of s plus 1. What is on the denominator? This is s plus 1 whole square plus 1. So, this cancels out and what I am left with is minus 1 over s plus 1 plus 1 and this is what minus 1 plus s plus 1 over s plus 1 is s over s plus 1. Okay. So, what is happening? right? So, how many poles do I have in the system? Well, if I just look at this transfer function after I blindly do all these computations, we will say the system has only one pole. 
and therefore we may say it has only one energy storing element. Well, that is not true. The original circuit had two states, this guy I L and V C and one of the one of those has disappeared now. Okay? So, what is what is happening when the system is uncontrollable is what we see here, see here is a pole 0 cancellation. Okay. So, whenever there are uncontrollable modes of the system, they get cancelled or they, they encounter a pole 0 cancellation and what we see as the remaining transfer function is now the transfer function of only the controllable part of the system. So, when we talk about transfer functions, we do all the computations, the simplifications, what we end up with is the transfer function of only the controllable part of the system. There is um, a proof for that, but we will not do that. So, this why this I just would like to show you an evidence that well, when there is a uh, loss of controllability, you see a pole 0 cancellation and what is left is the transfer function of only the controllable part. Okay. So, okay, let us go back here. So, so, this is the condition to check. Given a system configuration with a matrix B and A, I can always find out with this rank condition if whether or not the system is controllable. Okay, once I know that the system is controllable, what could I do with that? Right? So, while we were doing the root locus analysis, what we were essentially doing is does the root locus pass through the desired pole locations, the desired dominant pole locations, that was what we were interested in. Right? And then we said, well, we design a lead compensator, a lag compensator and pull or push the root locus such that the root locus of the, of the compensated system passes through the desired closed loop locations. So, here also I can uh, ask an appropriate question. Right? So, pole placement here means placing the closed loop poles, these are also, what are the poles? The poles were also the eigenvalues of the system matrix A. So, can I by choose of by choice of an appropriate controller u equal to minus k x place all the eigenvalues. So, what does this mean? So, I have x dot is a x plus b u and I say u equal to minus k of x is my control law and if I substitute this here I have a x minus b k x or in other words I have a minus b k times x. So, these are the, the eigenvalues of my original system, the uncontrolled system. Now, why are the control? The, my new, my system matrix has changed to this new a tilde if I can call this. Now, can I change or can I place the poles or the eigenvalues of the closed close loop system via this choice? So, this, this shows that well something is changing via b and k. Right. So, this technique is called the pole placement techniques. So, what is what is the contrast with root locus? Well, in the root locus methods, we were placing only the dominant closed loop poles, whereas in the pole placement design, we can place all the closed loop poles at desired locations. Okay. This is not surprising, again this is a good mathematical proof, but we will not uh, do this, uh, we will just learn this with some, some very small examples that a necessary and sufficient conditions for arbitrary pole placement. What is arbitrary? If I have n poles here or n eigenvalues, can I place all eigenvalues, can I shift all the eigenvalues, all the n eigenvalues to desired locations. So, this is arbitrary pole placements. So, when can I do this? I can do this only if the system is completely controllable. Right? So, if I just write down some, some equation, let right? us so just say I have x 1 dot is say x plus some k times u. Okay? So, what is the eigenvalue of the uncontrolled system? The eigenvalue of the uncontrolled system is at plus 1. Okay. Now, I say can I place this at say some value minus 2, well does there exist a k such that I can place this at minus 2. So, how should the uh, my, uh, my uh, system which is control the control system look, look like the closed loop system. Uh, so, does there exist x dot or say does there exist uh, u sorry a u equal to okay, this is also x 1 by the way minus k x 1 
such that the closed loop system, closed loop system is what x dot is a minus okay sorry uh, let us get this k also out this looks nicer now. So, x dot equal to x 1 plus u can I use a controller like this in such a way that the closed loop system is a minus k times x 1 the closed loop system looks like this minus 2 times x 1 ok. Now, what is known to me I know this a here. So, this a is just 1. So, this is uh, 1 minus k x 1. So, this a is just 1. Let me just write it over here directly. A is 1. So, I just am solving a linear equation now, right. So, 1 minus k is minus 2. So, this means that k is 3, ok. So, put put k equal to 3 here, you just arrive at this one. And this has starting with a open loop pole which was at plus 1 with y u equal to k x 1, I could place it at minus 2, right. So, this is essentially the problem of pole placement. Right? And what I said a necessary and sufficient condition for arbitrary pole placement is that the entire system be controllable. So, let us uh, do a little more some more example let us say continue the same one say x 1 dot is x 1 plus u and say I put another state x 2 dot is say minus x 2. Okay? Now, can I do anything with the poles of x 2? Well, the answer is no because there is no control input influencing the x2. Now, look at the controllability matrix. So, this system has A as 1, 0, 0, minus 1, B is 1 and 0. So, what is B? What is the controllability matrix? C equal to B A B. So, that is B is 1, 0, and A times B is what? 1 and 0 and this has rank of 1 not equal to 2 this is not full rank right? this is this is the n rank which in this case is 2. So, I can see here that the system loses rank it is not completely controllable therefore, my claim that for arbitrary pole placement the system should be con completely controllable. Well, this is one, one example of that. This is not uh, a big proof uh, anyways of that. So, just go back uh, to what we said here that a necessary and sufficient condition for arbitrary pole placement is that the system is completely controllable. Okay. So, let us do one, one, one last example here. Okay. So, let us say I have I have an equation which is like this x 1 dot x 2 dot this is my system 0 1 minus 1 0 x 1 x 2 plus 0 1 u. So, this is essentially the uh, 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 undamped pendulum uh, state space equation you could have seen this in the in the previous uh, previous lectures on state space. Okay. So, my question here is can I place the poles of the closed loop system via u equal to minus k x at minus 1 and minus 1. Okay? So, how do I go about doing this? So, first I check is the system controllable? Well, I just again check the rank of b and a b. So, this is my b, this is a. Okay, so, the controllability matrix C is 0, 1. What is a b? This is 1 and this is 1 times 0, this is 0 and this is of rank 2, right. So, well what I can say here is that I can actually do this, now, the system is completely controllable there can I therefore, I can place both the poles at, at minus 1, minus 1. Well, where are the poles of the open loop system that is just you look at the solution of the characteristic equation S i minus a equal to 0 and you find that the, the poles or the Eigen values are just at plus minus j omega. Okay. Now, can I choose u equal to minus k x or well in this case since k this, this is a system of two variables I will say k 1, k 2 x 1, x 2 such that this holds. 
Okay, so how will we? So how will the closed loop system look like? So how will a minus b k look like? This is a is zero one minus one zero minus well what is b? B is zero one and k looks like k one k two. And this is what this is uh, zero. Mm, okay, this is zero here, and what will I have here? I will have a, a one here. Nothing changes in the first part. Here I have minus one minus k one, and here I will have minus k two. Right. So this is my closed loop system matrix A minus. B K. Okay. Now I want the eigen values of this system to be at minus one, minus one. Okay. So what do I do? Okay. So when, so what is desired is the closed loop system to have eigen values of minus one, minus one. Which means, well, what is then? The desired characteristic equation. Well, S i minus a. So that's so I know that well since the poles are should be placed at minus one, this will be something like this: s square plus two s plus one. Okay. Now what do I have with me? Well, my a minus b k now looks like this. Is zero, one, minus one, minus k one, minus k two. Okay. Now where are these roots? So what is the characteristic equation from this? I just want to find S i minus a equal to zero. Right. Or this is the characteristic equation. This characteristic equation should just match this one. Okay. This is the desired one. Right. This is what I want. This is the characteristic equation in the unknowns. Unknowns k1 and k2. So this is, this actually is a tilde, right? So, so just a little so a tilde is actually a minus b k. So if I write down the characteristic equation, so this with all, after all the computations, the characteristic equation will look something like this: s square plus k2 times s minus 1 plus k1, and this should be equal to the desired one, that is s square. Plus two s plus one, which means that k two is two and minus one plus k one is one, which essentially means that k one is is minus two. Okay, so with this controller. I can place my closed loop poles to be at the desired location, and how do I check if the, if I can do this or not? It's just by by the system being controllable or not. Okay. So this was this was about about controllability. Now, if we look at what was this based on? This was essentially based on this now this this equation, this controller u equal to minus k x, which then assumes that I know the entire of x. Right, that all x's are measurable, then I can feed back these states. But usually, the states are not up for measurement. The states are not available for measurements. What is available instead is the output y. Okay, and this y. Okay, let's simply assume for the moment that this d is zero. So, so uh, what is available for measurement is y equal to c times x. and i can ask myself a question given this measure values right can i get what is x well you can uh, say an answer that then x is c inverse y this is true when well c is invertible or or if y the dimension of y is the same as the dimension of x but usually this is not the case maybe there are n inputs and p outputs right so this is a p vector this is an n vector and and usually p 
is less than n. Then if I were to do this state feedback control law based on these measurements, I should somehow be able to get an estimate of the states from these p measurements, estimate of these n states via p measurements. And that leads to me to define what is observability. Well, again I will not really go into details of anything of this, just to see what is happening. A system is said to be observable at time t0 if the if the system starting with x t0, it is possible to determine this state from observations of the output over a finite interval of time from 0 to t. Right? Essentially the problem is given x of t, uh, sorry, so, so given set of observations can I construct x t0. Well, it turns out that again, so, so this actually is, is, is this measurement here, right? I have measurements y of t from 0 to t, can I construct x t at 0. This turns out that if the rank of this matrix, well here I assumed that p equal to m, right? the number of outputs is equal to the number of inputs, which is generally should not be the case, otherwise it will just be a p n cross n matrix. So, nothing uh, there is no loss of generality here by the way. So, this matrix which is called the observability matrix is of rank n. So, once this is of rank n, then I can get an estimate of the state via measurements of the output y and once I know what the states are, I can always design a state feedback control law to place the poles of my closed loop system at the appropriate locations. Okay. So, I will not do any of these proofs of why this rank condition is true or why the complete controllability condition is true for placing the poles at arbitrary locations, but just to give a general overview of what is the concept of controllability and observability. Similarly to, to what happened in the case of controllability, observability also happens when there are pole 0 cancellations, which you could again check with the example which, which, uh, which we had done. Okay, so, that really bring, brings us to the, to the end of this course and uh, well, I, I, I had fun recording these videos, I had fun interacting with you over the discussion forum, sometimes over the hangouts and I hope uh, it would be useful to you in some form or the other for gate exams, for your regular university exams, uh, people who are teaching elsewhere. And, and, and any kind of feedback uh, is, is, is welcome. You could write to us what, uh, what you would like to improve in the course, what you liked, what you did not like, what you would like us to elaborate a little more. But overall, I hope it was, it was a good experience uh, for you. Thank you very much and see you soon.